Hi everybody! So I'm really excited about this video. I did something I haven't done in a long time. I'm probably going to regret. I basically stayed up all night listening to the audiobook for the new Harper Lee novel, Ghosts at Watchmen. And the... yeah, I haven't done... I haven't done that since college. Stay up all night reading. But uh, I really wanted to find out what it is. I was very anxious and it's been a long time since I was excited uh, and nervous and everything to read a book. And uh, and so the audiobook appeared on my feed and because I pre-ordered it and I just had to had to listen to it. So basically the history behind this book is very interesting. Evidently she had written it in 1950 and her agent had told her uh, that she should focus more on the scout character and her growing up. And so that's when she went back and wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. And uh, she at one time, I guess, had thought about having it become some kind of trilogy and having uh, the Watchmen book be the the end of the trilogy, uh, which is interesting to think of. And but you can kind of tell in a lot of ways this book it feels sort of like To Kill a Mockingbird fan fiction. <laughs> it, a lot of this stuff doesn't quite gel with what we know from To Kill a Mockingbird. I didn't hate it as much as I thought I would hate it. <laughs> In fact, it's very well written as far as uh, the, uh, I particularly liked the moments that felt like To Kill a Mockingbird, the moments of remembrance of of the uh, high school dance and that she goes to with Jim and uh, and that, that memory, the, uh, when there's a really hilarious segment where Jim and Dill and her and her uh, stage a revival and have their own baptism that was really funny so those sequences I really enjoyed and uh, I, I, I liked them they didn't really have a whole lot to do with the story but I I just thought that seemed like just vintage Harper Lee and I I thought that surprisingly Atticus doesn't get to do a whole lot which frustrated me a little bit because he's a little bit smeared uh, and it's, it's, I, I, I respect what they were, tr what they were trying to do or what she was trying to do, but I think maybe they took it just a hair too far because the idea behind the story is that Scout is learning to appreciate her father as, as a full, imperfect human being, not as this, basically it's somebody points out to her that she's looked at him as being a god which I never really felt like in To Kill a Mockingbird. I felt like she was almost sort of frustrated at him at times because he was so devoted to the case, you know, that she wanted even more time with him a little bit. So I didn't feel like that there was this... I knew that she, you know, she has to be told in To Kill a Mockingbird to stand for her father. She's not... Uh, I, so for me, I, I didn't feel like she's inherently just idolizing her father. But anyway, they kind of go with that for this, and uh, and Atticus he he gets involved with this town council. They're trying to the federal government is trying to enforce the Fifteenth Amendment and uh, enforce anti segregation policies. So force people to uh, co coexist together. And being from a small town in Alabama, there's, of course, many people that are against that. And so, basically, Scout sees Atticus at this city council kind of meeting. And the, the meeting does have ties to the Klan, although it's not specifically a Klan meeting. It's, a, it's like a council of all these different leaders from all, different, uh, all around the town. But the whole purpose of the meeting is that they don't like this, uh, this, they don't like what the federal government is doing. And it is pretty not good. It's not, it's a very, it's kind of a racist meeting. And Atticus kind of says things that he shouldn't say. And it, it makes Scout just heartbroken. She can't deal with it. And so it's basically about how, like, she comes to sort of forgive her father and kind of see what he 
like in his mind, he's standing up for the law because he feels like what the federal government doing is doing is wrong in the way they're enforcing this equality. And the, 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 the novel is not kind to the NAACP. Uh, the, he, he's seen them as these nuisances. And he kind of feels like because uh, the African Americans at the time, because the blacks at the time, weren't educated, that therefore we can't give them the rights because they won't have the education to be able to, to use those rights effectively, which of course is ridiculous. But anyway, that's sort of his, uh, he's not looking in, into the future and, and saying we need to, we need to educate these people. He's saying that, oh, well, they're not, so therefore we, we can't give them all of the rights. So all that stuff was very uncomfortable because I, I, I also idolize Atticus as somebody who, you know, is one of the only characters in uh, literature that to me is an honorable man and that I feel like it's such a cliche in modern writing to sort of tag on these negative attributes of your, of your hero. It's like, oh, well, we can't make him too perfect. And I didn't feel like Atticus was too perfect. He was just a good man. We all know good men in our lives, and yet we see it so rarely in literature. And I don't know why. You know, that bummed me out. <laughs> but, and it did also, like I said, it did frustrate me that I didn't feel like he got enough time to kind of explain uh, and you didn't get to hear enough from him. A lot of it was other people talking about him and Scout kind of thinking about him. And so, and that was frustrating. But there's also sort of a plot line of uh, her and this uh, boyfriend of hers and should she commit he loves her, she loves him, but she doesn't want to be tied down to marriage. And that was, eh, I, I could take it or leave it. I wish that they had just made Atticus sort of involved in the city council because he wanted to stick up for the law and not added some of the more racist elements uh, into his character. I could have, that made, would make more sense. And they do actually, you can tell it was written before To Kill a Mockingbird because they actually do change a couple of key elements of what happens in To Kill a Mockingbird, which I'm surprised they kind of wouldn't go back and fix that because it doesn't make sense. Again, that sort of makes it feel like fan fiction of To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, and I, I did like, though, sort of the way it ended, uh, the way that she's able to kind of uh, come to grips with the this imperfect person that is her father and still realize and forgive him and love him and I, I I related to that because I've had a person in my life who I really looked up to and I kind of leaned on for spiritual support uh, kind of in my mind fall off that pedestal and that was a really devastating experience and that was very difficult and so I really related to kind of what she went through and how and, you know, he says to her, he says, I love you. And uh, so, you know, and then that, that's what's in the end is the most important thing. And, you know, with all of our flaws, if if we don't all sort of communicate and talk and uh, and share our propositions, but also always share that love, then that's the only way that things will ever get better. And that, you know, somebody isn't just because I think sometimes I feel like well, somebody does a bad thing uh, in our society now, somebody says a bad thing, and that's it. They're done. They're off TV. They're off wherever. We don't want to ever talk about them again. They're a horrible person. Um, instead of maybe saying, okay, can we, can we learn from this person and can we all grow together? Uh, and so I felt like that was a nice thing that I took from the story. And it kind of did remind me for, of that period of my life. And so I, uh, I was really, uh, had mixed feelings about it, <laughs> but I didn't hate it as much as I thought. I thought it had some positive things. I, like I said, I liked sort of the sections where you feel like you're reading To Kill a Mockingbird. I liked some of the, just the little vignettes that you got along the way. Say, Harper Lee is not going to win her second Pulitzer Prize for this book, but it wasn't a total loss. You could definitely tell that she is a master of her craft. And there were parts that moved me and there were parts that frustrated me and that I wish she hadn't included. Uh, it's, it's, it's just an interesting, I don't think we'll ever, ever have quite this 
thing like this kind of book out again you know where it's something written before the the masterpiece but that's actually a sequel to said masterpiece it's very unique uh, and uh, I definitely recommend checking it out like and and I would say just kind of like we we can't completely throw away Atticus because maybe he has uh, over the years developed some prejudices I don't think we should maybe discount this book just because it has some couple parts that's like mm, I wish they hadn't done that uh, because there are a lot of strengths and a lot of things to enjoy so let me know what you guys think when you get a chance to read it I'll be very curious and uh, I will talk to you please subscribe to my channel I'll talk to you later bye